What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got another video for you that is converting media using a VLC media player. Why exactly would you want this instead of using something like FFmpeg or a video editor like Premiere Pro? Well, because this is available on a lot of systems. A lot of people like using a VLC over the built-in Windows media player for very good reason. So how exactly do we go ahead and convert a media file using VLC media player? Well, over here I have a 1.1 gigabyte video, which is my last upload to my main channel around one minute. So having it at one gigabytes is quite unreasonable for saving it and storing it locally. So how exactly do we get to converting this and compressing this using a VLC media player? Now, of course, I'm using this as an example. You can use literally any media type for this. All you need to do is open up VLC media player using the shortcut, head into media, followed by convert slash save. Then we're going to hit add next to add files and we'll navigate to where our video is. I'll go ahead and double click on it. And if you're adding multiple, you can either add them one by one or selecting them and hitting open in the bottom right. Once you've done that, you'll see a list of the files that you're going to convert over here. Then we're going to hit convert slash save. Once you've done that, you'll see this window over here and we're going to make sure that convert is selected. So display the output will leave off for a little bit of extra performance and deinterlace is not necessary for this video file. And usually it's not necessary unless you know exactly what it does. Under profile is where we choose what kind of media we want to output this as. So all we need to do is simply select a format and I'll be saving to H.264 plus MP3 for the audio MP4 video. H.265 video is available down here if you'd like a bit more compression at the cost of compatibility on older systems and encoding and performance, meaning it will take a lot longer. So I'll leave it at the default H.264 plus MP3. Then you go ahead and select an output file or folder. So I'll hit browse, browse to where I want to save it and I'll save it as exported. Once you've selected options, you can hit the little setting icon next to your preset over here to get a bit more advanced. So I'll leave it at MP4. Video codec, we can change some details over here, such as bitrate, quality, frame rate, etc., etc. And we're going to leave these as is. Now, because I want to save on the file size, I'll change the quality so that it dynamically chooses the best option. So this goes all the way up to 99. So I'll set it to about 70. Bitrate I'll leave as not used because quality will determine that for me. And we'll go across to resolution and we can set a frame size, which we can set to say 1920 width by 1080 height as such, which is the default 1080p. Right now my video is at 2560 by 1440, which is 2K, so I'll convert it down to 1080p, 1920 by 1080. Some other common ones, 720p is 1280 by 720, 360p is 640 by 360, etc, etc. We'll leave the scale at auto unless you want to zoom into the video, so we'll leave it as such, and then we can check the filters tab. So under filters, you can add some fancy things, but I'll just be leaving all of them as off because we just want to convert the video. I don't much care about these other options. Then we can head across to the audio codec tab to change information with our audio track. Here's where you can change the sample rate. I usually keep it at the best and you can change the bit rate up here. For MPEG audio, there is a limit, which I think is somewhere around 320 kilobits, but it seems like you can go as high as you want. In fact, I lie, 512 seems to be the highest bitrate for two-channel MPEG audio. So I'll leave it at that. Obviously, you won't be pushing it this high. You'll try and keep it somewhere near the original. And if you want to do that, you can simply tick the Keep Original Audio Track button, unless, of course, you want to convert the audio. Then if you have that option unchecked, you can also change some effects for the audio. But again, I'll leave them as is, so I'll keep the Keep Original Audio Track as true. If you want to remove the audio entirely, simply uncheck Audio at the very top over there. But I'll leave it as Audio On, Keep Original Audio Track On as well. Then in the final tab, this will be useless for most people, but you can embed subtitles if you have a subtitles file somewhere. But I'll leave it as off. So now that we've set it up to be 70% video quality and we're keeping the audio track the same and also we're changing it down from 2K to just 1080p, I'll hit save and then we can go ahead and hit start to start transcoding. As you can see, it opened up the folder and if we have a look inside of VLC, you'll see the little progress bar at the bottom is making some progress. This means that it's currently going through the video file and as this bar fills up, we know exactly where it is in the encoding process. So we'll wait for this to finish. And there we have it. It's now complete. 
So if we have a look inside of the folder, we can see that our 1.1 gigabyte file is now 11 megabytes. That's one hell of a saving. If I open it up, you can see it's 1080p, but the quality seems to be a little bit worse than you might have expected. And I think that might be because I forgot how to do this. I think that my mistake is from over here. Video codec quality, I think the lower that the setting is, the higher the quality. So I'll set it to one and try again. And that does seem to be true. I set it to one and it ended up being bigger than the original file size, but it has been downscaled to 1080p. So just in case you make a mistake like me, I'd highly recommend staying away from the quality section over here and the bitrate section. If you head back to quality, set it to one, and then hit the down arrow, you can select not used, which is what we want here. Basically, this will pick the best quality for 1080p, keeping the audio track, and it'll convert it down. So let's go ahead and export this one here, which has no bitrate or quality setting on it, letting the program decide the best settings. Let's refresh the folder, and there we go, down from 1.1 gigs to 117 megabytes, and the quality is great as you'd expect, a lot better than setting it to 90 quality, and a hell of a lot better file size-wise than setting it to quality 1. So as I mentioned, to avoid the mistake that I made, make sure that you leave the quality section as blank unless you know what you're doing, and if you know how the bitrate works, then you can go ahead and mess around with that instead. Bitrate's gonna be a bit easier to understand than quality. Anyways, that's about it. Hopefully you find this useful to some capacity. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.